Where do you see me all the time? In your in your studio, and oh, you're you making magic in. on That's air. Fun. And I just walk by the window, and I'm like, "That's Steve Tall." You should just come in. Yeah, is this an invite? Absolutely. I got that invite. Wouldn't it ruin the show though? Like, what if you're on a topic? <laughs> I worked. I have to say that I worked long and hard to get the freedom to talk. Yeah, to really, talk. right? Yeah. So exactly, especially like this, like disco demolition. Just a few years ago, wasn't that far away? <laughs> it was a long wasn't time ago. Nineteen seventy-nine. It was thirty-seven years ago. You kid, does it blow oh, your mind? You? I'm not thirty-seven. Yeah, no, you weren't even born yet. <laughs> no. How old are you? I was born. You're still a virgin, right? Yeah, that's right, my friend. <laughs> Um, it was one of the greatest um, things that The Loop ever had happen to it. It was pretty cool. I mean, The Loop was, uh, uh, you know, it was a big deal then, you know? I mean, it was... Uh, it's there... still a big deal well, now. Yeah, no, 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 I, no, I, I, yeah. But right. back then there was no internet. Yeah. Right. There was no Spotify no. or whatever. There were like two album stations until we they called them album you know, yeah album oriented rock there was uh, the loop and wmet and everybody listened to the loop yeah so i mean like what would be a great share for a radio station now like a three like probably a four three or four we had like eights and nines yeah I mean, it was ridiculous insane it was you know and it's like when i started i started at the loop in 96 was my first term really? and like literally the only thing that people could talk about when I told people across the country, I'm like, I'm going to work for the fucking loop. Uh -huh. like, right? They're like, Steve Dahl. <laughs> <laughs> Disco number one. Like, I wonder, and I always would sit back and go, I wonder if Steve loves that or hates that. I like it. I mean, put on a I mean look, what would you do? I mean, right. <laughs> so. Well, I know, okay, when, right. I know when I post on the internet about old pictures, everyone asks about you. I love Steve Dahl. I miss the days of Steve Dahl. Well, you have a podcast now, too. I do. What is the podcast? It is, uh, I was doing we'll a podcast. We'll see it right here in oh, a moment. It's at doll.com. <laughs> it's, it's a subscription podcast, so you have to pay. Just get it. But to get it, I mean, you want it. Well, people, I mean, yeah, there are people that want it. So, yeah. I mean, that's, that works out well for me. Right. Um, it's, it's fun to have the podcast because, you know, you can do whatever you want. You can swear and mm -hmm. talk about really anything. And um, it's kind of a nice... It's a, it's a, the seamy underbelly of the radio show. Right. Uh, so. And it's, you know, the thing about it is, it's nice to have were both. you hesitant about that whole stuff? Uh, I mean, the whole podcasting thing? I was. Because I'm still on the radio. And it's like, it's kind of like, all right, nobody's really going to listen. There's a million of them out there. I mean, is this really going to benefit me? Has it done that? Well, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I have been uh, podcasting, like, in one form or another. For over 15 years. Yeah, you believed years. Wow. 15, right from the yeah. beginning. But I'm not so sure that I understand the model where you do a show. Now, you guys do separate podcasts, right? Right, totally. But like uh, on our station, like uh, Bram Meyer will, will do a show, yeah. and then he'll send out a podcast with no commercials. Right. So why would you ever listen to the show with mm -hmm. the commercials? There it is. You could just wait for the podcast. There's nothing no extra commercial. that you're missing. Right, exactly. Right. So I, that, I don't know if he gets ratings for I don't know. I don't, I don't know. All I know is it's impossible to make money with a podcast unless you're like a national celebrity like Adam Carolla yeah. or something, uh, unless you charge a yeah. subscription fee. So mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, look, if you, WLS 2 to 6, you know that. This is the day that made it all uh, something for you. Yeah. Well, some people don't know about that. And but this is, what I, I don't do, this is what I don't want to do in an interview. Mm -hmm. Talk about everything that's in the book so you will buy the book for the guy. Well, I'll tell you right. this. Uh, so tell us but something. It is so cool what happened. I know, so right? Give us a sprinkle. I'm more into doing what she says. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'm gonna leave this. <laughs> Go ahead. I came to Chicago from Detroit, where I was. I was doing very well in Detroit, and this was in 1978. And I came to work for WDAI, and uh, you know, I had I was uh, Janet, my wife still. Uh, we oh, lived, you're married. Uh, Never mind. <laughs> That's how you get them back. <laughs> Ruin the interview. My wife and I are separated. Okay. <laughs> She's out in the suburbs and I'm downtown. That's right. It's the rule, the mile rule. It's funny, yours is only a 15 mile rule. It's fine. <laughs> Down from 90. Right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, she would move to Chicago unless we got married. So we got married in August of 1978 and moved here. She moved here. And then. On December 24th, 1978, they, I was down on Wacker Drive doing the show. They, 
in dressed as Santa, on you know, because it's Christmas what Eve. It? Yeah. yeah. And they called me up and they said, we're switching to disco. You can stay, but you can't do your show. You just have to play disco records. And so I said, that. Right. So, <laughs> Which is amazing. And then I just started making fun of WDAI, really. Yeah. And they were playing disco, and I was, so I would make fun of disco records, and then it kind of turned into that. It caught on, yeah. and you went with it. Did like you said, and you said before that, like you didn't really want to do this. That no, night. no. Like but, you were kind of whose like idea was it at first? Was it the guys at the White Sox that came? It was to Mike you? Mike Vec, Bill yeah, Vec, Vec right? And uh, they were doing kind of weird things to try to get things up. Anyways, yeah, I mean, they right. would draw like maybe a big crowd would be nine thousand people. That's but unbelievable. You had fifty thousand people show inside and like another forty outside. Well, you and you had an army of people. What were they called? The insane coho lips. The insane coho lips. Who was this huge thousands of people who backed you? Yeah. <laughs> this event. It was. Uh, it was pretty cool. The. Uh, it sounded a little dangerous though. It went well. It you know, here's the thing. I thought okay. I'd done a couple of bar appearances, you know, because that's a good way to make extra money. I yeah. Had, we had a band. Well, a lot of people don't realize that that's what we do. Like, make most of our money. Back in the day, Back I made day, more money. More playing, money doing gigs. Playing bars than I did on the radio. It's unbelievable. So... By the way, that doesn't exist anymore either. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> Go ahead. So, um, you know, I, I could fill up a bar, or, you know, get a couple thousand people at a bar, and that was good. I thought if I got if I drew if I doubled the crowd there and yeah. got mm -hmm. let's say I drew ten thousand people, which is a lot of people. Yeah, it would still there would be thirty thousand empty seats. So who wants to do that? I mean, that, <laughs> I never just thought like, of it that remind way. you of what an idiot you are, right? So, in an army helmet, <laughs> and you're just like standing there. So, I think you look cute with a fish. Did you guys see it? Look here it is. But here's the best. Look, the very first April Rose. Yeah, so Lorelai. Lorelai. She was the first Loop Rock girl. Yeah. Yeah. Where it is she just, now? Do you talk to her now? She is in LA. She um, the book is kind of like a time capsule. It's sort of like an oral history. It's awesome. The and pictures in here are amazing. She's, she's interviewed in the book, and she's she has some pretty interesting insights yeah. into what went down that yeah. night. So that's a good thing to do. Get. I mean, I'm sure she was overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she was. Well, it turns out they hired her to do commercials, and and and. And then they invited her to come here for that, and she got there, and she's like, "I'm afraid of crowds. I can't go out there." Really? Oh wow! You have to go out there, yeah. right? <laughs> well, and imagine you have to explode a crate of records as well, and then everyone in the stadium storms the field right yeah. after you do that. Like that probably is a little terrifying if you're scared of crowds. They did not storm the field till after we left. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, you said you went upstairs. You so, said right? yeah, I left. I went back around, came upstairs, and I saw all these people. I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna get fired." Right, and I was, I was told <laughs> the guy. Well, no, it I was well, somehow it was. It doesn't matter. Happen. They would have made it his fault, yeah. right? Yeah. Back in the day, right? Yeah. So the guy that runs the station, uh, B, uh, B. Thomas Hoyt was his name. He's from Texas. He comes up to me. He goes, "Whatever, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna use you as mm -hmm. a demo. Just use me. Yeah, seems yeah, yeah. more awesome. I know. It's so more awesome. Okay. Whatever you do, uh -huh. be cool tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. And he kept coming up to me. Whatever you do. Yeah, what does that mean? And I'm, I'm like, okay, what What do you mean, it be cool? And he goes, don't, I don't want you to talk about this. Yeah, right. And I'm like, are you kidding Right, me? seriously, it's on the front page of every thing ever. And he goes, if you talk about it, you know, I mean, he basically said, if you talk about it, you're going to get fired. Yeah. So I Did go you, from all of that to thinking, right. thinking I'm going to lose my job if Did I talk about it. Did you wake up, what, take me through that morning when you woke up the next day. You see it, it's in all the papers. You know he says not to talk about it. This is what I need to know as a DJ. Because like, <laughs> the things that I have fought myself before, you're like, you know, this ain't worth it. I'm going for it. Yeah. And well, I think that's... I did not sleep. Right. I did not sleep that night. <laughs> and I thought, okay, I have nowhere else to go. I've married this girl. I brought her here. There's yeah. nowhere else to go. I yeah. can't go back to Detroit. I can't. I yeah. have nowhere to go. So, um, I mean, I, I, well, you know, I could just maybe try to not... You know, I could not mention it and just be very vague about it. And then I got up. To, I went up. We were in the Hancock Center. And then I, and got up. I got, I got off the elevator at the, on the 37th floor. And like TV cameras everywhere. Everywhere. And, and I went in and I tried to not talk about it. Impossible. And, for, and then I thought, you know, it, man, this is like what the reason that all that happened right. is because I said what I thought. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I just I I thought. It. 
just go for it. And I think your boss made the worst decision telling you that because it did the best thing it could ever done for that that brand. Yeah. And our brand that we're at today, because of you, we wouldn't be here. I mean, look, the logo's still the same. It's yeah. insane. The shirts are still Remember the little time they changed it for a yeah. little bit? Mm -hmm. And then when I was over there in like 96 and 97, we're like, that logo is awesome. We're like, oh, that logo is old. I'm like, that's the most iconic logo. That's in like Chicago, on yeah. a pair of boobs ever. <laughs> that's like the Chicago flag. I mean, it is yeah. the Chicago. Yeah. I, you know what? To this day, the most un. I mean, it's noticed by anybody yeah. on the streets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They know what it is. Yeah. It doesn't matter. And it's because of you. Well, not just me, but yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot yeah. because of you guys. Well, so people think that disco went on a decline then after this happened, and they're kind of blaming it on you mm -hmm. a little bit. Well, I think it was kind of on a decline yeah. anyway because it was getting pretty lame. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, like Donna Summer was doing a half lame. hour version of MacArthur Park. Or right. whatever. <laughs> but it went, it for sure went underground and it became house music. Right. Yeah. Which is kind of a cool outgrowth right. of, of that. Absolutely. Thing, so. But, you know, they always, it's so funny because even ESPN, VH1, does it blow your mind when like people call you out and know like, Steve, you're on VH1 or you're like, because it always comes up. When di anything about disco comes know, up, you are the ending factor of the story <laughs> I know, about I disco. I know. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's cool. I, I, yeah. I, I can't it say that. It goes down to history as the most outrageous thing that's ever happened at a ballpark. Yeah. Ever. And they, they canceled a game because of it. Isn't it? The White Sox had a forfeit. Yes. Their next game because of this guy. Right. And <laughs> it was your Detroit people. Oh, man, you're. People in Detroit were not. Well, happy I won, but I know I won a game for them. Oh, yeah, that's true. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm one with the Tigers. <laughs> so, is there anything about the day that you would have changed if you could go back? Uh, no, I don't think. I really don't think mm -hmm. so. I mean, uh, you know, it was it was uh, unexpected, and it was really cool when you know when it happened, and. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, it's really been a good thing for me for 37 years. <laughs> yeah. It really has. It's awesome. There's the book. Can we, you know, next year is the Loop's 40th anniversary. Really? Should we redo it? I don't, you know, <laughs> would you do it? Would you do it? I don't think you Let's blow this, something off. I don't think EDM. You, <laughs> we'll blow EDM. It'll be awesome. We'll put Skrillex in a box, blow that little <laughs> up. It'll be the best thing ever. I'll wear a helmet, walk around with a fish. Whatever you want, Just man. tell me to do it. I'll do it. No problem. Steve Doff, there it is. Disco Demolition, the night Disco died. Grab it. Thank you. I have a job because of this guy. I don't know about that. Woo! Thanks. Woo! Salute.